Hello there, colleagues. I'm uh, Lorenzo Tavelli, and uh, I'm originally from Italy, and currently I'm working in Boston as a full-time faculty at the Harvard School of Dental Medicine. So I use uh, Guys in Fiber Guide in a very large variety of uh, clinical case scenarios. When uh, I want to be quicker in my procedure because I don't need to go on the palatal tonal side, when uh, I want to be very minimal invasive for the patient, but most important is when locally in the side, I see that I have enough retinous tissue. So if I just need to increase the thickness, whether I want to do it coverage for a tooth or increase the thickness around the dental implant, having creatinine tissue makes me already thinking about using this uh, uh, graft substitute. So here is a very tough question. I would say 50-50. Um, I like about the six millimeter is that I basically can tailor the graph material as I want. It can be that I just use one matrix, I cut in two pieces of three millimeter and I use for the whole length. Or sometimes I really need the uh, especially around a dental implant to increase the dimension I want to use more often is maybe something around four millimeter. So still in this case, I will use a six millimeter uh, fiber guide, but around teeth, probably I think uh, is much easier if I just open the box and I already have a three millimeter fiber guide in thickness. I like to use the three millimeter when uh, I'm doing root coverage procedure in natural dentition because at the end, again, that I need is not uh, more than one, two millimeters. So I believe around natural dentition, that's the best uh, way to have a natural appearance in, in terms of thickness. Around the implant, sometimes it's the same. I still use three millimeter, but sometimes I feel I want a little bit more uh, can be four millimeter uh, matrix. So I like to have the six millimeter and tailor and cut the matrix myself uh, based on the detail. So in terms of the timing for sufficient augmentation for dental implants, I think it really depends on the bone. If I place uh, my implant and I do not need to do further bone augmentation, so the, at the time of implant placement is when I do sufficient augmentation and I like to use, for example, fiber grade. Uh, but if I know that when I place the implants, the buccal bone is very thin or uh, I have some thread exposed, I prefer at this time to just do bone augmentation, bone graft, the membrane, and then later on, at the second stage time, after three to four months, this is the time in which I do the uncovering, and then uh, I do my soft tissue augmentation. But bottom line, never before implant placement, either at the time of implant placement, if I don't need to do any bone augmentation, or at the second stage. Now, it's not impossible theoretically to do at the same time both bone augmentation and soft tissue augmentation, but I recommend uh, to follow these steps in order to have more uh, predictable outcomes. There are two different types of outcome measures that uh, I like to assess. One uh, related to the patient, I want to see the patient and I want to hear from the patient during the post operative period that the pain was very, very limited. Of course, there's going to be some pain because there's a surgical procedure, but very limited at the, just the early days. And then from a clinical point of view, I want to see at uh, three and six months, uh, and then of course, also uh, with a longer follow-up, that a certain amount of uh, tissue thickness uh, was augmented with a very nice and aesthetic uh, profile around the teeth of the implant and basically an uh, augmented uh, soft tissue seal, either around teeth and dental implant. So there are no doubts that using Geistic Fiber Guide uh, significantly and tremendously reduced patient morbidity. And actually, when uh, I'm actually discussing with the patient about different treatment modalities, uh, patient acceptance tends to be higher towards soft tissue augmentation uh, when uh, fatal harvesting is not involved. So whenever it's possible, it is definitely uh, the option to consider because uh, we can significantly uh, reduce the mobility of the patient, in particular during the first uh, two weeks. So I don't think so. Um, we can have favorable and favorable condition both around teeth and dental implants. 
There are no doubts that as any graft, uh, uh, the more vascular surface you have, the better it is. So around teeth, uh, I prefer that when I open my flap, I don't have too much exposure of the root. And uh, the more I can have blood supply from my flap, the better it is. But the same concept apply around dental implants. So I do not think that the outcome uh, should be different. But of course, we need more studies to assess that. But so far, what I can, had, uh, I can tell you from my experience and preliminary results is that uh, uh, this material works very well around both teeth and dental implants. So in terms of the tips that, that I can give to new user is, of course, you have to really take a good care of your flap design and soft tissue management, because it's very important to raise a good flap and to suture everything properly to have a very nice ceiling of the graph. And uh, other tips I can give to new user that probably uh, were not really exposed to this type of graph materials is that the really uh, reason and motivation that we're moving towards uh, graph substitute is that it's not that I want to be two minutes quicker in my procedure, but I want to provide a better service to the patient. And there are so many cases in which autogeny is still indicated, but there are still many, many cases in which you can obtain the same without really harming uh, the patient with additional morbidity and harvesting from the palate. As an experienced provider, you should be able to distinguish which cases needs one treatment and which cases we can do in this way.